SketchUp for the iPad is here, but is it any good? We reached out to one super advanced SketchUp user that's been using SketchUp for about 15 years. That's right, me. What did I find out? Well, SketchUp for the iPad is really full of surprises. Let me break it down right now. Now that SketchUp for iPad was released, I spent some time putting it through its paces and I asked all the right questions, starting with, is this really SketchUp or just another bad port? And that's right, I'm looking at you no, AutoCAD, I'm looking at no. you Adobe. Looking at the toolbar, this is fairly complete, but I did not see the measurement tools that are so crucial to professional modeling workflow in SketchUp. But when I tap this button here for more tools, no. there they are. The tape measure tool, the protractor tool, these are some of my favorites, and guess what? They worked brilliantly. This app was already meeting my expectations. There were also a couple of tools I didn't recognize. We will get to those later in the video. A tool that was missing that I was really hoping to see in hopes that I could make some stupid motion graphics for these videos was the 3D text tool. Hopefully they add that in a future release. We have all the typical menus, though they are more like the web version than the desktop version, and I prefer the desktop version. One notable omission is the outliner. The outliner is so crucial to me for keeping large models organized, so at this point I would not jump into a detailed model of an entire campus, but I might be comfortable, say, on a just modeling a room or a piece of furniture, so major surprise number one, pencil and touch inputs are implemented really well. They just use touch controls that I think have been successful in other apps. Two finger tap to undo, three finger tap to redo, one finger touch to orbit, two fingers to pan, but that is just the tip of the iceberg. The strength of SketchUp has always been that it is really good at inferencing and constraints. They're so simple. You can just draw on the plane that you want to draw and you can just, want to, you can just move things in the direction that you want to move them. So the developers actually included buttons with these little pop-up menus with each transform button so that you can initiate the constraint even without a keyboard. That's really thoughtful, but guess what? They took it even a step further. You can actually press these buttons in the middle of doing the transform. Now that seems minor, but it's actually so helpful because it just helps you stay in the zone when modeling. And it really in 3D modeling software, it's those kind of details that really matter when you're doing any kind of prolonged work. So now I'm really starting to be impressed. And that leads me to major surprise number two. Working on this app with a keyboard and a mouse connected doesn't feel any different than working on the desktop or the web app. Keyboard binds are the same, navigation is the same. Did somebody say universal control? I think this settles the question that this is fully SketchUp and it's a really thoughtful hmm. version at that. But it doesn't have everything. So that leads to the next question. What is missing? Hmm. As mentioned, the outliner and the 3D text tool are missing. Most notably, plugins and the extension warehouse are missing. The ability to import and export other CAD formats, an iPad native version of layout for drawing documentation, the Boolean sandbox tools are missing. I'm sure I missed a few, but those are the ones that really caught my eye. I also wish I had the ability to export some kind of vector format, like in SketchUp Pro, as I become a major fan of rendering vector graphics software on the iPad. How does this compare to other 3D modeling apps on the App Store? Well, I would say it's the best. Shaper 3D and Umake have some catching up to do. Don't get me wrong, I really like Shaper 3D and I would definitely say there are some things uh, where you really benefit from that sketch driven workflow and some things that you can't do here. So Shaper 3D fans, don't come after me too hard. But my problem with Shaper 3D is that the bodies to folders way of organizing the model just doesn't quite cut it for me. This isn't a video about Shaper 3D, but personally, I prefer the groups and components type of organization that works so well in SketchUp or the parts and assemblies uh, type of organization that works in SolidWorks. So that leads me to this question and that is with the pro level 3D modeling app now available on the iPad, can I dump my laptop and my desktop? No, not until there is a good way to do drawing documentation on the iPad. Drawing documentation is a crucial part of almost any professional design process. With that said, it does this does bring the iPad more into the design development process, which as I learned when I quit sketching on the iPad and subscribe because I'm actually making a video on that and it really caused some paradigm shifts for how I work. But, but what I learned is the iPad is really great at facilitating communication with colleagues, vendors, and clients through the conceptual design, but it's more especially the design development process, which brings me to major surprise number three and back to one of those new mystery buttons that I saw on the toolbar, and that is the markup mode. 
This is maybe my favorite thing about this app. It also, it is so incredibly buggy, like frustratingly buggy. Like you can use it once and it breaks. So use it, but don't trust it and understand it's full of bugs, but I absolutely love this and I can't wait for them to squash these bugs. Hopefully they do it in the next release. When you press this little tool and you can draw over your model, it's just the Apple Notes UI here, which is not my favorite, but it's workable. I really like this for two reasons. First, one thing that actually made me start this channel was seeing young designers at their computers just strolling, scrolling in and out of their models constantly waiting for inspiration to strike. No, that's not how you do it. Just sketch. Digital has flexibility that paper doesn't. I, I really get it. So I understand the urge to design on the computer, but drawing by hand is also so helpful to design thinking. So the fact that drawing works so well with an Apple Pencil is one thing I appreciate about the iPad workflow. And I really like how you can just quickly sketch and make notes on my 3D model as I develop the design. That helps me to think as I model. But what I like even better is I can easily share my screen on a Zoom or a Teams call or push these out as images and animations and I don't have to leave the app or expose that the fact that most of my recent contacts are parrots. Of course, the dream is just to do a fast sketch and have it magically turn into a 3D model. Wait, what? What, Goose? You, you, can, you can do that? Yep, it's here. Major surprise number four, five, and six is the auto shape tool. Now, I had no idea what this tool did, so I clicked on this little graduation cap and I see here in this pop-up box that I can just sketch a shape and it turns into a face. Uh, you know, a face meaning like the uh, part of the modeling geometry. Then I scroll down and I can draw a shape in, the, in a line straight up and it turns into a primitive, like a box or a sphere. Okay, but then I scroll down even further and this one blew my mind. I can actually sketch these symbols and it will quickly create 3D components. Okay, that's dope. But then I thought, how am I gonna be able to sketch these and have any control over scale? Well, it turns out that you can just sketch and then tap on Entity Info, and wow, there are live components with a ton of ways to edit them, even beyond the overall dimensions. That is so cool. I hope they add even more types of components. I love this for architectural purposes. That is such a cool time saver. But what will really save you time is just having a good solid approach to modeling accurately in SketchUp. So make sure you check out this video as soon as it's ready.